So man, it's a beautiful early fall morning. I'm out taking a walk down here in the creek before we got a rain event coming in. So before that happens, I wanted to get out and get some, get some time. Figured I'd touch on my concrete rubble bank reinforcement that we put in a while back. I haven't talked about it a lot, but it's been holding up really well. We've had several good heavy flow events through here. Actually, we had one that was the biggest that my neighbor had ever seen and I had ever seen since I lived here. And it held up against that, so that gives me hope that you know it has a good chance of, uh, of holding up. Now, I'm not a fool when it comes to water. I've lived beside it my whole life, and I know that given the right conditions and the right amount of rubble in it, it could wipe that out easily, but it hasn't. And not so far, so I'm hoping that it'll stick around for a while. And after the shop's done, I'll probably extend it to those two sycamores. You know, make it a little longer, because it's worked really well. And I've got the material, so I may do that. Also, clean out this rubble here, which can make the water pretty turbulent and accelerate the erosion on the bank there, which I don't want. But it's worked really well so far. Definitely happy with it, considering, you know, low cost, uh, not a ton of work. Uh, short term really uh, answer to my erosion problem but I'm happy with it definitely So seeing as it's late October, my inner wizard wants to whip up some sort of solution to combat the insect infestation that I have going on around the shop here. Now, I haven't seen any termites, but I have seen a lot of carpenter ants, which from what I've seen look to be equally as destructive as termites in some cases. Wood bees, I mean, on and on and on. Rot, dry rot, just wood deterioration that in some spots is getting pretty bad. So we've got to do something about that or else it's going to continue. So I've got some products here. These are products that we can all buy. Some of them are toxic, so I don't suggest that you, you know, replicate what I'm doing here, but people suggested this, so I'm going to give it a shot. So before I do this, I think it's important that I do a little disclaimer. One, ethylene glycol is toxic, like I've said. I'm not responsible for what you do with it at all, right? Play it safe and just don't mess with it. Two, I don't know that this concoction will even work. I don't completely understand the chemistry behind it. I know that it's based off of commercially available products that are pretty expensive, but then again, I've never used it, so I don't know, right? What I'm going to do is make a concentrate. I'm going to take a gallon of ethylene glycol, four and a half pounds of borax. Actually, I'm going to use four because that's all I've got, and then three and a half pounds of boric acid. And I'm going to put that in a pot on a propane burner, bring it up to heat, 260 degrees Fahrenheit, to boil off any excess water in the ingredients, and then take that. Once it's cooled off a bit, add equal parts water, and then you can apply that to wood any way you like. I'm going to brush this on, at least that's the intention. You probably could spray it on, but I suggest that you don't do it at all, actually. Um, you wouldn't want to get this stuff in the air and ingest it, although that ethylene glycol has to be deliberately ingested before you know, you're going to cause any, any major issues. But like I said, play it safe and just don't do this at all. But I am, so let's get started.
So 260 degrees Fahrenheit or 126 degrees Celsius is what we're going for. So the magic spoon says we're about 100 and, I don't know, 160 degrees Fahrenheit at the moment. And we're about, or all the solids are just about into solution. Now I think that it would have helped quite a bit to heat the ethylene glycol by itself to, let's say, 150 degrees Fahrenheit. And then add the boric acid and the, bor and the borax that would probably help that stuff get into solution much faster because I noticed that it will settle to the bottom of the pot when this was colder and uh, start hissing and burning. Right? Now, so I've had to keep this stirred, keep it moving to prevent that from happening. So a little note to the guys and gals who may make this but shouldn't. So we'll wait. You know, part two of this video will be, I don't know, what time is it? 3.15? So 15 years from now, at 3.15, we'll come back and we'll see if this stuff really works after we apply it, right? So we're getting pretty hot. Magic Spoon says we are about 215 degrees Fahrenheit, 212 degrees Fahrenheit being the boiling point of water, 100 degrees Celsius, same thing. And the goal here is just to get this to a light boil. Remove any excess water that's inside here. Why? I'm not exactly for sure, but that's what it says to do. I'm using the Bayou Classic propane burner, which I've had for years. Definitely a good little burner uh, that I have used from everything from outdoor cooking uh, to mountain lead, really. So it won't be long. We'll be up to temp and be done with this. Two fifty four, maybe two fifty five degrees Fahrenheit. Obviously, that wouldn't be C. Um, and our mercury thermometer a little slower to react than on two fifteen. Um, I believe I'm looking at that right, 215. So there are a little variation between the two, but it's relatively close. These glass thermometers, I found something really weird, and I don't know why they put this feature in there, but if you shake it like that, they get really flexible. Just strange. See, now it goes back solid, but if you shake it, Starts turning like rubbery. That's weird. So that's it. It has boiled for quite some time. I'm going to take this outside and let it cool down. So there's a concentrated wood treatment. It's definitely hot right now, above the boiling point of water. So if you added water to this right now, it would flash boil and could injure you. So leave it alone until it cools down. But, you know, we'll add one part water, one part concentrate, and then we can apply it to the wood. So this is just a test. I diluted my concentrate with you know, equal parts water, so let's just say a quart of water to a quart of concentrate, right? Then I've got this little roller, and I'm going to roll this on just to keep from spraying it everywhere, right? I don't want this stuff getting all over the ground and all over everything. Just want it on what I want it on, if I can make that happen. And then I'll come back in a little bit and do this again, right? This is what it says to do. I mean, it soaks into the wood pretty good. It says it'll soak into wet wood as well. 
just keeps the bugs from eating it. So because this is untreated wood, the plywood here, I'm already starting to see some mildew wanting to grow on this stuff. And this is something we can do short term, test. I want to see, will the mildew, I mean it started to get kind of heavy over here, just green uh, mold I guess, because I live in a swamp. I want to see if this will stop that from colonizing on the wood. You know, it already has in, in a lot of places, but it will spread, right, if I don't do something. And that'll be a good test for this. Whether it will work or not, I don't know. But it'll tell us, you know, in a few weeks, actually, if, what, if this will stop the growth of the mold. This stuff goes on fast. It's not like you're painting a house. It doesn't have to do anything. It just kind of soaks in pretty quick, really. And uh, from what I read, you can still paint the wood. You know, whatever you want to do. I don't really plan on painting this, but you know, if you wanted to, that's what I read. Uh, like I said, I don't have any first-hand experience. Shh, listen. If you listen really close, you can hear the mold screaming. Maybe that's just the screaming that's constantly going on in my head. I don't know, but hopefully this stuff works, right? Not a chemist. So here's a look at the mold that I was talking about. I didn't show it on the wall. It was only in one spot, but it was getting started, right? It's already started on this board, which was sitting on the on the ground over here. Not outside, right? Not in the rain, but there's enough moisture in the air around here to get this stuff established. And you know, it can be definitely unhealthy, right? I don't necessarily react bad to it, but you don't want that stuff taking over your workspace or living environment at all. So hopefully that stuff I put on will help. We'll see. So here's a piece of white pine, 2 by 6 that I coated half of it with that solution and I left the other half uncoated. Just one good heavy coat and then I let it set for a day. Can you tell which side I coated and which side I didn't? Well, I coated this side because the end grain's still wet. But you get the idea, it didn't discolor the wood at all, not noticeably anyway. So that's promising, right? Didn't turn it green like you would think antifreeze would do. So not too awful long ago, I noticed this screw was new inside on this telephone pole in my yard, and I got to looking into it wondering, you know, what that was. And from the best as I can tell, what the electric company will do, we'll come out and they'll drill the pole, they'll pull a core of wood out to see how structurally sound the wood is, because sometimes these will rot from the inside, right? And you'll be left with a shell that could be dangerous and fall. So they check them, I guess, every now and then. Now, I'd also heard, I forget who I heard this from, but what this person would do is drill a hole like inside their mailbox posts, inside their fence post or gate post that they didn't want to rot and that weren't treated, right? And they would drill a hole in it and they'd pour a wood preservative down in that hole and then cap the hole with a wood dowel. I thought that was pretty neat. I've never done that myself, but I believe they poured motor oil down inside the wood. Now, we used to use motor oil to coat the bottoms of our barns to keep them from rotting, and it did work. Motor oil, uh, kerosene, diesel fuel, something like that, that would soak into the wood, and that worked. So potentially that's a good idea. Well, I guess a better idea is to buy treated wood in the first place and not worry about it. But, you know, if you didn't, potentially that could work, I guess. So it's been a few days. I want to share my results with you. Now, I ended up going over this wall probably a little more than what I should have. Ended up going over it three times in total. And, make, well, actually down low, it was four times. Three total coats on the wall, and then... With what I had left, I went and done, you know, what I could reach without a ladder. Because the mold was worse on the lower part of the wall than it was up high anyway. But you get the idea. Probably if I had to do over it, I'd just done one good coat and called that good. Because it did give me a slight white tinge to the wall, especially where I coated it that last time uh, with the, uh, you know, rot treatment. And it also discolored the harder woods as well. Uh, this is my long leaf yellow pine window seals. It didn't soak into that wood as well because it's so you know, resin impregnated. 
Um, I left this one uncleaned because I want to give you a good example of what you could expect. Now these were the same way, but I just wiped them off with a wood cleaner and then coated them with a spar urethane because that's what I was going to do anyway. I just wanted to treat them first. But let me show you this window seal. Maybe show you an up close look at the wall and uh, you'll see for yourself. So there's a look. You can see just a little white discoloration. It's not that bad but, and it does wipe off. So I'm going to use a good just a damp rag with some wood cleaner. Wipe it off and then urethane this. But let me show you one of these knots here. Maybe a little better example of what it looks like when it's drastic. So you can see that solution got inside all those cavities in the knot and uh, just left that powder behind. Some streaks were you know, dripped and run. But, you know, you could take a brush and brush that off. But yet the wood itself still stays white whiter than it was before. So, not a big deal, right? Doesn't really matter. But if this keeps the wall from turning green, that's, uh, that's fine with me. So fall is definitely in the air. You can smell it and the leaves are probably about at their maximum amount of change. We don't always get this lucky. Some years the, they'll blow off the trees before they get a good chance to change, but not this year, which is nice. And a lot of people will drive hundreds of miles to drive these country back roads in the eastern U.S. to get a look at the pretty color change that we get. So it's really nice, relaxing. And if you ever get a chance to do it, you know, it's, it's worth it, in my opinion. Just beautiful to look at. All right, guys, that's it this week. I kind of took it easy in the shop this week, took a little time to myself. This week is my 40th birthday, right? My 40th birthday, which I'm excited about and also depressed about at the same time, if that makes sense. You know, 40 is getting up there. I know some of you guys are twice that age, but, you know, 40, right? Not something to be completely excited about, I don't guess. Monday is my 18th wedding anniversary to my lovely wife Elizabeth, which I am excited about because that's nice. And this past Thursday was my mom and dad's 60th wedding anniversary, and that is a very long time to be married. And I was happy to get to celebrate that with them. I did a lot of things outside of the shop this week, and it was nice. So, But I've got big plans this week. I'm going to try to bust it and get some of this roof at least started. Um, hopefully within the next two weeks it'll be done. That's the plan. But it's weather dependent, right? <laughs> But I've got plans, even if the weather doesn't cooperate, we'll see. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully 
this wood treatment will help some of you. It was a suggestion in the comments that I looked into and seen that it was quite popular. So hopefully it will work for me as well and maybe help some of you guys in some situations. You never know. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, and subscribers, like I always say. If you need anything, send me an email. Click on my little guy to subscribe to the channel. And that's it. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Waiting for the sun to blossom